Hi, I'm Dave from Cloverleaf, and today I'd like to talk about taking a stock car that you might use on your home track and modifying it so it runs well on a wood track. So the first thing we're going to want to do is remove the body. On this car I've got four screws. I loosen them and drop them into my tray so I don't lose them. Okay, now once I got the body removed, the first thing I like to attack is the motor. Now, when I take the motor, I have to be careful that I don't break the chassis. So the best thing to do is actually remove the back axle. And you can do that by just applying a little pressure to the back end of the car as I lift the bushing out from either side. And it should just snap right out. Just remove that, set it aside. Now, I'm gonna take this little pry tool that I have, and I'm gonna pry from the back end of the motor. I don't wanna use I don't want to pry from the front end. This is typically where it breaks, right here by the pinion gear. So I'm going to pry it from the back end where I've got a little bit more give and just gently lift the motor out of there. And there it goes. Put that in my tray. Work out the front end of it. There. So now I've got the motor out. It's still connected to the car, but it's removed from the chassis. The next thing I'm going to do because I'm going to change the guide flag also, I'm just going to go ahead and cut the wires off the motor to get it out of my way. And I've removed the motor. So at this point, I, I'm going to prepare my motor, the new motor to put in here, and then I'll install the motor. So let's do that. The motor I'm going to use today, it's a Prana motor. It's a new motor on the market. It's a nice responding motor. I'm also going to use a slotted 12 tooth pinion, pinion gear. I'm going to put it on with my pinion press. Line this up. Start pushing the pinion on. And what I want to do is I want to push the pinion on and have it close to the end bell. But I don't want it touching the end bell. And I need a little space in there. I need enough space to pull the pinion back if I need to. So I need to be able to get, say, this tool in there. I, in essence, I just need some gap in there. I want to get it close, not too close. Maybe the thickness of my uh, flat blade screwdriver. So I've got it close there. In fact, I'm going to use my flat blade screwdriver. I can still get the blade in there. I've got a little room in there. I can get you know what, that's close enough for me. I just don't want to get it too close. So, my pinion's on the motor. It's on the correct side of the motor. I could have put it on this side or I could have put it on this side. But for this particular car, it's on the end bell side. And then just remove the tool from the motor. Now my motor's all set. So I'm ready to put it back in to the chassis of the car. But before I do that, this is a good time to go through the chassis and actually sand the edges of the chassis. Sand it anywhere where the body and the chassis come in contact. That way it'll help improve your body flow. With the motor not installed, it's much easier to get around with a file or some sandpaper or an emery board. And I, it's all these places here that I need to concern myself. Along the edge here where it touches, along here, on this particular car. So in here, I'd probably want to sand it a little bit. Again, up this edge, this edge, and around the front. And it's even easier if I remove the front wheels. So again, before I put in the front, uh, put in the motor, let's just remove these front wheels. 
take the tires off, and if I turn the hubs gently, one of them should let go. Wow, this one's on tape. There it goes. Nope. Okay. That wasn't very <laughs> gently, but I did get it out. So now, with the front wheels out, I can get in here and sand this all around the perimeter of the edge of the chassis and give myself some body float. If I look at this without having sanded, it, it snaps in there really nice and snug. And what I want it to do is I want it to be able to flow. I want a little give between the chassis and the body. So this is a good point to put the motor back in. We'll put it in the same orientation that the original one came out. I just want to gently snap it in. I'll bias this back a little bit, snap it in, snap that side in, and the motor is good to go. It's ready to add the rest of the parts to the car. This is a good point then to, I'm gonna assemble my rear axle. I had taken the axle out to take the motor out, put the motor in, and now I'll put the rear axle back in. Got a couple of axles here, one for the front and one for the back. Need to put some bushings on it. I'm using slot car corner race bushings. The race bushings have a little opening on one side of the bushing with the axle. I don't know if you can see it in there. I like to keep that opening towards the inside of the car, not towards the outside. So when I go to oil it, the oil tends to collect there and it stays there. Also gives less, less friction between the bushing and the axle. So I got the bushings on there. I need to put my spur gear on. Now on scale electrics and on fly cars, on a sidewinder, you, you need to use a bigger size spur gear. This is a 19 millimeter. It comes in three different teeth patterns or sizes. It comes in a 34 tooth, 36 tooth, and a 38 tooth. They're all 19 millimeter. More typical are 18 millimeter gears. Make sure you get the larger one. And this one's the 34 tooth. So I'm using a 12 tooth pinion with a 34 tooth spur gear. Now I'm not going to tighten the spur gear down yet. So I've got some room to move around. Put this in Okay, you can see I've got it set to push the bushings in to the chassis. The spur gear is lining up nicely. It's right in the middle of the pinion gear. So I'm gonna go ahead and snap that in. Boy, that one's tough. I'm gonna take the spur gear off. Sometimes it's easier just to take both ends of the axle and push it in. Now I can put the spur gear back on. Originally, I had the spur gear this way. Where's my pointing device? With the majority of the gear towards the outside, the hub of the gear was towards the inside. Now that's fine when I go to put my wheel on, the wheel and the uh, gear will be right next to each other. Sometimes it's better to turn this around Uh, that way I've got space between my gear and the tire. But what happens here is, is, is it doesn't quite line up. Uh, it's really close and it would work, but I don't like it as well. Now I can space this gear out a little bit, put some spacers in there, but then what might happen is, is my wheel and tire are out too far and it won't fit underneath the body. So those are a couple of things I need to consider for this particular one. I'm gonna put the hub of the gear towards the inside with the gear itself towards the outside. And then I'm just gonna have the tire and the wheel really close to my gear. I've got a little space in there and that's about where I wanna line that up. I'm gonna go ahead and tighten this gear down. I'm gonna tighten my tire and wheel down and I'm gonna put the tire and wheel on the other side. And let's do that. Tighten the spur gear. I'm gonna tighten the uh, wheel.
Why not? I need to check this. You can see it's binding. Now, it was binding because I didn't quite have this bushing seated properly. It snapped in, but it was still cocked a bit. And that's spinning, that's spinning how I'd expect it to. So I, I know I've got no binding. My other concern was I wanted to make sure that my tire was not touching, rubbing on the pinion gear. And it's really close. I may have to adjust my tire. I may have to move it out a bit, especially if I've got room once I get the body on. And if I don't have room, I can push the pinion on a little bit further. So that's another option. A third option would actually be to cut the shaft using a Dremel and a cutoff wheel. And I would actually cut part of my pinion gear. So I'd cut my pinion gear down a bit too to make sure that I don't have rubbing between the pinion and the tire. Actually, there is a fourth option. I could actually profile the edge of my tire, this side right here, and give it quite a bit of rounding um, so it would, would not be close to the pinion. I'm gonna leave it right now. Let's see where we end up. So the wheel and tire combination I'm using, it's a quick slick tire on a CB style wheel. It's a five spoke wheel. These are 15 by 10 wheels. And I believe the tire I'm using is a 200, which means it's a 20 millimeter from top to bottom when it's mounted. Typically, I'm gonna probably have to use a spacer, but right now I'm just gonna put this tire on here. I'm not gonna worry about a spacer. I really won't know where to space it until I get my body on. So, for all practical purposes, my motor and axle, and rear axle, are all reassembled. Next thing I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna work on the guide flag and I'm gonna put in the front axle. The front axle is pretty straightforward, but let's take a look at what we have to do with replacing the guide flag. First thing we're gonna have to do is take your screwdriver and remove the old guide flag. Now, there's a bunch of wires down here. There's a screw underneath that. Just loosen the screw, drop it into your tray. There is the guide flag removed, still connected with the wires. Now, most of scale electric these days come with this, this plug option, so you can use a, um, a digital plug. I'm not interested in doing that, so I'm just gonna remove that plug and I'll just cut it off of there just so I can get the wire and the old guide flag out. Okay, there we go. Now we're all set to put a new guide flag in. The guide flag I'm gonna use is a, a slotting plus guide flag. It's got a very long shaft on it so I can set the guide height and then cut off whatever extra uh, guide uh, whatever height I have on my shaft, I can trim it off to the right height. You can see how, how much I have sticking up there. But it might be that I drop this down a bit and have less showing, but I still want to trim the top of that off of there. Now before I put that on there, I always find it easier to actually put the braid into the guide flag before I put the guide flag into the car and then try to put the braid in. So I'll go ahead and put the braid in. Now again, this is, this is braid. This is slot car corner braid. I'm using copper, you could use silver. Um, I just put it in this dispenser just so I can pull it out and use as much as I need without having the whole thing unwind on me. Let's put this up here and I could show you. Typically what I wanna do is cut a piece of braid that is about the same length as my blade. That's, that's what I measure it by. I go a little bit longer but I use the length of the guide flag as an indication of how long I want it to be. i do the same thing on this one, so I've got two of them about the same length. It's certainly better to have them a little bit longer than shorter. And then I'll feed. Okay, I'm gonna feed the braid in there, and sometimes I have to just kind of push down the corners of the braid 
to help get it started. There it goes. Yeah, this one's a tough one. Okay, let's try something else. So it's not going through that way. I'm gonna try it from the bottom. Sometimes I go through the top, sometimes I go through the bottom. Sometimes you have to remove some flashing you know, in the hole where the braid goes. If this doesn't work, I got one more trick. Okay, well it went on the left side, but I, was, I still have an issue on the right side. So I'm gonna bring that braid down through the guide just having just a little bit of it exposed. I don't want to push it down flush. I want to, I'm comfortable leaving a little bit of it up. So there's one side. Let's see if we can do this other side. Oh, that one went right through. Now, if I had an issue and it, and it got only that far, I would take a pair of needle nose pliers or some tweezers and I would just pull it through and, and I'll get it through there. Okay, so I've got the braid in the, in the guide and you can see they're not quite even and they extend past the blade and I really don't want either of that. I'd like them to be even and I'd like them not to go beyond the length of the blade. So I'm just gonna trim it off and there I've got it where the braid, it, it might be still a little bit long. I'm gonna leave it there for right now. I can always trim it later. Now let's put the guide flag in here. And this is a good place. I, I'm gonna stop here for a moment because I need to get my guide, my lead wire connected to my guide flag. And I think I'm gonna put my axle in here, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna take a little break and get some other stuff ready and we'll come back and I'll show you what to do from this point. So at this point, we've replaced the motor, we've replaced the rear axle assembly, we've replaced the front axle, we've replaced the wheels and the tires, and we've prepped the guide flag. So in the next section, we're gonna install the guide flag and then we'll solder the leads from the guide flag to the motor. And so we'll do a little bit about, we'll talk a little bit about soldering. So we'll see you then. Thank you.